Happy Halloween! Or All Hallows Eve, or All Saints Day, or Samhain, or whatever. Hello, class! One of my favorite cultural traditions is the carving of jack-o'-lanterns. A couple of weeks ago, I went to a festival called Rise of the Jack-o'-lanterns. Thousands of fruits, yes, like tomatoes, pumpkins are fruits because they are part of the flower, were turned into incredible works of art. Some had horrid faces, some copying other works of art, all painstakingly carved into images. Carving images into foods is a human tradition dating back as far as 12,000 years ago, and every year millions of people take a knife to a gourd for... Well, why do they do it? So today we're going to look at the history of the jack-o'-lantern, which started in... Ireland. Oh, Ireland, how many gems have you contributed to mass culture? Click over here for another one, History of St. Patrick's Day. Do it. No trick. All treat. Yes, jack-o'-lanterns were born on the Emerald Isle, but not as we know them today. See, the original canvas for a jack-o'-lantern was the turnip. So let's carve some jack-o'-lanterns as we explore this tradition. I feel like Dexter. I'm going to try to talk to the camera and not cut my hands off. This is the largest turnip that I could find at the store. I don't know if this is going to end well. The idea for jack-o'-lanterns comes from an old Irish folk tale about a man named Stingy Jack. I think I need a spoon as well. Now, like most folk tales, there's a bunch of different versions, but every single one of them stars our friend Stingy Jack. Now, this mythical Jack, he was a drunkard, and he was always trying to pull one over on people, especially the devil. This is cutting a lot easier than I thought it would. The devil actually got jealous because he was hearing how Jack was this silver-tongued devil that could pull cons on anyone, and he wanted to test him. One story says one night the devil finds Jack, and Jack, thinking he's about to get dragged down to hell, asks the devil for one request, a drink. The devil, being an uncharacteristically good sport, agrees, but there's a little problem. Jack has no money. Now, in order to pay the tab, Jack convinces the devil to turn himself into a silver coin he can use for payment. The devil's cool with this, because he's about to get Jack's soul, and he's also going to cheat out the bartender. Double win! But when the devil turns himself into a coin, Jack throws the coin into his pocket, where he also had a crucifix, trapping the devil. Another tale says that the devil came around to take Jack's soul, and this time, Jack's last request was an apple from his favorite tree. For some reason, Jack couldn't climb up and get it himself, so the devil volunteered to do so, and when the devil did, Jack carved a crucifix into the tree, again, trapping the devil. Whichever way you hear it, it always ends up with Jack making the devil agree to never take his soul to hell. Problem of hell solved, right? Not quite. See, when Jack dies of consumption, of course, he makes his way to the pearly gates. God, not one to let scheming drunks into heaven, denies him access. Thinking he has no other options, he makes his way down to hell. And the devil tells him, no, you can't come in here. You made me promise never to take your soul. So you are now doomed to wander the earth as a spirit. So Jack, uh, hit the bricks. And while you're at it, Here's a red-hot coal to light your way through eternal wandering. In order to carry the coal, Jack hollows out a turnip and pops it inside, therefore becoming Jack of the Lantern, or Jack-o'-lantern. But why a turnip? There we go. I will admit, it is rather adorable. I'm a little jack-o'-lantern! Ha ah, ah, ha ah, ah, ha ah. ha! See, when this town was first being passed around Ireland, the Americas were still not known to Europeans. Pumpkins are indigenous to the Americas, but turnips are abundant in Ireland. Later, the turnip gave way to the newly introduced potato, but when Irish men and women started flocking to America after the Great Famine, they found their ultimate media, the pumpkin. Again, we see the importance of the Columbia Exchange. Well, you don't know what that is? Click here. Come on, you know you should do it. But why Halloween? Well, the Irish started to carve jack-o'-lanterns to ward off evil spirits. This was especially important before All Saints Day on November 1st. All Saints Day had already been celebrated, dating all the way back to the 8th century when Pope Gregory III made it so. And a mixture of Christian and pagan traditions like Samhain, the celebration of the festival, is nothing new. Just check out the pagan influence on what we know as Easter. Come on. Okay, I've given you three links so far. If you've not clicked on one of them, you're just being standoffish. Ah, yuck. Right at first. Ugh. Oh, oh god, yuck. This is either gonna come out really good or really bad. But on the plus side, making a jack-o'-lantern out of a turnip is awesome because it smells like big turnips in here. 
So that's why we take perfectly good fruits, carve scary faces into them, and hopefully make delicious snacks out of their seeds. I think we're just about done here. Came out okay. Could have been a lot worse. Let's, let's see how it goes. I am the one who knocks. And then says, trick or treat. Ooh. So there you have it, the history of the jack-o'-lantern, If you made a jack-o'-lantern, whether with a pumpkin or a turnip or whatever, put a link to it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, be safe, and have a happy Halloween. Ooh.